The owner of a new apartment building must install 50 water heaters. Let's say the proportion of these water heaters that will last 10 years or more is 0.25. We can think of these 50 water heaters that the owner buys as a random sample of all the water heaters. After 10 years go by, the owner will actually know the proportion of water heaters that actually lasted 10 years. This proportion that lasts 10 years can be thought of as the sample proportion. In this example, the sample distribution of the sample proportion refers to, and let's break it down for a moment. They're buying 50 water heaters from a company. They could have bought any random 50 water heaters. And because of that, the sample proportion they're getting right here is a sample proportion from the sample distribution of sample size equal to 50. So they'll find out the sample proportion that lasts in a sample size equal to 50. And this could have been any random sample of 50. So this means that the answer to the first part is A. Next, to be able to know what the mean and standard deviation and the shape of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion is, we must meet three conditions. So let's go ahead and check these conditions and comment on them briefly. So condition number one. First, we must have a random sample. And the problem states that these are a random sample. So yes, we definitely meet the first condition because the problem states that we have a random sample. And that is key. On the test, make sure the problem says that we have taken a random sample and thus we have met the random condition. Next, we have condition number two, which is less than 10%. And what does this mean? The 10% condition means that we have sampled less than 10% of the whole population. And with some pretty safe assumptions, we can assume that these 50 water heaters are less than 10% of all the water heaters that the company makes. We could even comment further and say that it is safe to assume the company makes more than 500 water heaters so this sample size of 50 is less than 10% of all the water heaters the company makes. Finally, condition number three is the success failure condition. And yes, we meet this condition because we need to look at how many successes there are given P and how many failures there are given Q. P in this problem is 25% and Q is the complement, which is 75% obtained by doing one minus P. So let's go ahead and take n, which is 50, and times that by p. 50 times 0.25 is 12.5. Next, we take q, 0.75, and times that by n, which is 50, and get 37.5. Both 37.5 and 12.5 are greater than 10. It's important to note that we need at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. We do this by checking np and nq and making sure both are greater than 10. Now for part number three, it actually follows that the shape of the distribution will be normal with a mean of p and a standard deviation of p times q over n square root if we meet all three conditions. So when we figure out what the mean is, well the mean of the distribution is just p, which is equal to 0.25. Next we can solve for p times q over n square root and obtain the standard deviation. Finally, if we meet all three conditions, the shape of the distribution of the sample proportion will be normal. Next, suppose that after 10 years pass, she finds that 16 of the 50 water heaters still work. Calculate the sample proportion. Now, in her sample of 50, she had 16 that still work. 16 is equal to x and 50 is equal to n. 16 over 50 is equal to 0.32. And this is our p hat. She observed in her sample of 50 that 32% still worked after 10 years. Next, we need to find the z-score for our observation. So we need to do p hat minus p over the standard deviation of p hat. We found that p hat was equal to 0.32 and p is equal to 0.25. So let's divide this by our standard deviation and obtain our z-score. Finally, given our answer above, would you consider having 16 or more out of the 50 water heaters still working after 10 years unusual? Well, look at our z-score. Our z-score is less than two in absolute value. And this means it could occur within 95% of the time. It's not that unusual. A z-score is a standardized metric of how unusual something is. And this z-score 
is close to 1, and that is not unusual. So no, our z-score is not that large, it is less than the absolute value of 2, and thus we do not think it is that unusual.